everybody. Let's see. Yep, that's picking up me just fine. Okay. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Getting a little started a little early today, uh, so I can get through. Oh, hopefully three pages. That's that's the goal, really. Each week, about three pages. Uh, cause I've got a fair bit of work stuff to do, uh, setting up a new laptop and stuff. Trying to remember passwords. <laughs> That's really the draining thing. Mr. Bushido! How are you? Oh, that's my cat's food going off. I don't know if you could hear that or not. Anyway, I hope you're having a good day, Mr. Bushido. Let's look about octopuses. Pretty good. Yeah, can't complain. Um, so the weather is actually pretty warm today. It's supposed to be kind of slushy and gross the rest of the week. Uh, so it's nice to have some sun and some warmth before we get to that. And just plug it along. Greek. All right. So this one, I think, is the last section on animal life, which is a shame, because animals are fun. But... Hey, Steven, how are you doing? Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Right? You guys are in the future. Octopus. Eight-footed. It's an octopus. All right. Sperma. Seed, spawn. We we all know that word. Not going to get into it. Not bad lurking while working in the office. Cool. That's a good thing to do. May you have a good day in the office. Uh, Ketos, a sea monster. Okay. I don't know what a sperma seti is. I I'm guessing it's a seed monster. <laughs> I'm a little terrified to search it. Uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, never mind. It's a waxy substance found in the head cavities of the sperm well. Oh. Okay. I guess you can make candles out of it. And oh, because a a whale is a Kato, so okay, I check in now. Uh, Nautilus, Nautilus, right? Those are funny fishes. Ostreon, Ostreon is an oyster. Conque is a shellfish. Oh, that's cute because it's got conch. It's a conch fish. It's cute. Uh, Coquinos a on is scarlet. Oh, I didn't realize that the word cochineal meant scarlet. I've seen it before. And, uh,. I never really knew what it was. A scale insect or red colorant. Yep. I think I just pretended I knew what that word meant and never did. Made for the pulverized bodies of female cochineal insects. Gross. But coquinos, scarlet. Okay. I feel like that's not a color we see very often in Greece. No, I, I don't know my color words that well, but I feel like I don't see it that much. A chrysalis, a chrysalis. Sure, yep. Uh, Fulon is a leaf. Yep. Uh, or a fill. Uh, Zeros are on, withered or dry. Yep. 
I don't know the word filozera, but I'm guessing it means a withered leaf. Askidion, a little bottle or a sack. And bacterion, bacteria, which means a little stick. Sure, okay, I can, I can see it. It's a little iffy, but I can see it. All right, I'm looking up Philozera. Oh, what was that notification from? Oh, thanks, Max. Thirty-five months. Woo! I'm hoping in a couple months to review our budget so we can uh, resub to a few people. Thank you for sharing. I hope you enjoyed your bike ride today. Philozera. Um. Insect pest of the grapevines. Okay. It infests the root system and leaves. It probably makes the leaves dry. Uh, Ascidian. Uh, sea squirts. Gross. Okay. Good. Almost three years, pretty crazy, and don't worry, I understand. And I did. Toes were cold. I'll do wool socks on Sunday. Were you not wearing shoes? Or, like, just not thick enough socks? But I guess if you were going pretty fast, you know, the wind chill and everything. It gets pretty cold. Anciently believe What was ancient? Oh! That waxy sub... Substance was anciently believed to be the spawn of the whale. Kathos. Sure. Just not thick enough. That's fair. It's like, you weren't wearing sandals, were you? <laughs> uh, yeah. The weather's pretty nice today. En tois hudasi esti daina theria octopola. In the waters... We would probably just say in the water. Uh, there are terrible beasties. Octopuses. I'm going to rearrange it so it sounds a little bit better in English. Octopodes are terrible beasties in the water. In the water are the terrible beasts, the octopuses. And however you want to say it. There's no, um, other than with water, there's no article. So, it's hard to say which one they kind of want to put emphasis with. It can be flexible. You are so very pro bike safety, you won't wear sandals. That's wise. I'm pretty sure I have. But generally, like, my bike riding experience was really limited to my neighborhood back at my old town where I lived in Minnesota. So it would be like one mile with not much traffic. <laughs> I mean, you still got to be careful, obviously. Um, but yeah. can't remember. I don't did I ever bike with sandals, or did I always have my tennies on? I always had my helmet. It wasn't that reckless. But it's like... Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. You don't have to listen to the to the lesson. Or you can. Hopefully you'll learn something. Alright. To Australian. That was the oyster. Micra esti conque. Alright, so... Important here, micra is modifying conque, not ostreon. You might think, oh, the adjective small is right next to ostreon. Clearly, <laughs> we're modifying that. I think Punch is trying to get the cats to be loud so they'll be picked up on the mic. Because <laughs> it's dinner time. Uh, but it is a feminine adjective, that alpha at the end. So it is going to be modifying conque. So the oyster is 
a small shellfish. Okay. Helmet is a big thing most forget. <laughs> I'll take it. Good. I appreciate that I don't completely fail the bike safety test. And I ride my bike on the correct, you know, side of the road, the vehicle side. I do, do the little hand gestures, all, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I never rode my bike that much. Although sometimes if I went to the other side of town, I would have to cross a, a, a highway. So that that would be the dangerous part. Not like a big, big highway, but still. There's more traffic than the neighborhood. Alright, number three. Ekusi ta askiria kai ta bacteria. Alright, they have... I don't know who they are the the little sticks and the little bottles I don't really know what this sentence means because I don't know what the subject is of a kusi uh now sure Ta eschidia and ta bacteria are plural, but they're plural neuter, so they're probably not the subject of a husi. Uh, it would probably just be eje. Um, and then if they were the subject, then there'd be no object that they have. But there's a chi. So I don't really want to make one the subject and one the object, because then what do I do with Kai? Like, is it uh, the little bottles have even little six, have also little six? Because Kai can mean even or and, um, or also. It, it, can, it can vary a little bit. I'm just not going to worry about it too much. I think they just... No subject. Maybe, maybe oysters. Carrying it. That is good, Max. I I know I enjoyed having an evening off and playing Xenoblade <laughs> Chronicles. It's like, oh well, there are worse things than not having a computer, as long as you don't like. You know, sometimes you need it to to get something done, but. I mean, at least in my household. I mean, I have my work desktop right here. So, as long as my work desktop or my work laptop are working, as long as one of them is working, I'm not in dire straits. We have too many electronics. Alright, number four. Tafula ton dendron, kai ta petala ton anthemon, xera. Okay, the leaves of the trees and the petals of the flowers are withered. The verb AC, R, is not in there. That's okay. We'll just supply it as you do when there's no verb. Um, although, again, it could be SD because they're neuter, plural. Um, because fula and petala have the article, we're going to make that the subject. We're going to put it first, and then zera being the adjective in the second part of the sentence. Predicate adjective. Number five. Entoi spermati ton prodon kala estin anthea. In the seed of the roses are Beautiful flowers? Yes? Does that make sense biologically? Because, like, the, the beautiful flowers and this, the, you know, reproductive stuff is in 
the flower. Shouldn't it be the other way? Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> Roses are beautiful. <laughs> the end. Uh, I don't know, do we consider an entire bud a seed of a flower? I'm not a horticulturist. Horticulturalist? I'm not sure, but that's the gist of it. Crusalides in Tois Dendrois Essi. There are chrysalis, chrysalises, chrysalis in the trees. <laughs> that rhymes. Let me let me figure out what the plural of this is and if I can define that better. Crusalides. Crusalis. Oh, it's... Oh, right. The chrysalis. I don't know what my brain was trying to do. I think it was trying to make it a flower. A butterfly. Thing. Butterfly sage. Oh, joyful! Hey! Thanks for the sub, man. Much appreciated. Enjoy your I keyblade emote. I keyblade you emote. Because that's how we feel about Kingdom Hearts. I keyblade you. Alright, so there are parts of a butterfly in the trees. <laughs> Otherwise, it just gets much too technical. Still don't know what the plural of it is, though. Crap. Chrysalides. Okay, so they... Or chrysalises. I'm going to go with chrysalides. Because it sounds better. Because that's Greek. Alright, to kokinon kalon hos rodon esti. The scarlet, right? Wasn't that scarlet? Yep. The sc Word order, what are you doing to me here? Because, like, the scarlet, beautiful, how rose is. Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, I appreciate Greek very much, and I'm just gonna flip it, just reverse it. How beautiful is the Scarlet Rose? What? The Scarlet, because Kalon is just beautiful, Kalos. It's not even beauty. I mean, you can use it substantively. Oh. And, like, why would you use hos as a... What are you trying to do to me? Do you have a better way that you wanted me to translate this? As how? The scarlet, beautiful, as a rose is. Yes. Good. I'm going to pretend. That made sense. I like my way better. Uh, oh yeah, all all's well here. I think people are are being chill. Ta megala hudata eche kai kitea kai nautilus. All right. Uh, so the great waters, the ocean, has both monsters. And Nautiluses. Squids, right? Nautilus. Squid. Oh, that's my cursor. I thought I had something on my screen. It was just... Tiny cursor. Alright. Cool. Well, that's animals. Now we're going to talk about man and his body. Anthropos. Man. Good. Gune, woman, wife. Um, as it says in the parentheses there, the um, base of the word used in the other cases is gunaik. Uh, so the genitive is gunaikos. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a weird one. Uh, miso, I hate. 
So teaching is very early misogynist. That's lovely. Okay, Pais, a boy, a son, or a slave. We use for a slave. Uh, Ago, I guide, lead, bring. Good. Yeah, that's a very important verb. Ago, and then pedagog, ped pedagogy, leading kids. Eh, don't worry, Stephen. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do that office work first. Uh, cranion, skull, cranium, sure, good. Skeleton, that's not where the accent goes, I just wanted to say skeleton. Uh, skeleton, skeleton. Ophthalmos, eye. Uh, iris, the pupil. Yep. Chris, the nose. Rhinoceros. Stomachos, stomach. This is all very, like, we know this. Gaster, belly. Arteria, artery. That is a word you do not see very often in Greek. Arteria, artery. Palame, palm. And then ice, into. Ice or S. That's the same. You see them both very frequently. Work is often interesting in a good kind of way. Oh, that's good. That is good. All right. So. Yep. Kale hegune tois ophthalmois tu anthropu. The lady is beautiful in the eyes of the man. And I will say usually we'd probably use an aner, andros for man. And anthropos, more for, like, human. But I guess there's fewer English words that use aner. There's a ton of words that use anthropos. So we're learning this one first. We'll deal with it. We'll, we'll survive. Well, that's a good... It's a good word that has on air in it that people actually use. Because, I mean, misandry is also a word. Hatred of man. Uh, people don't use that as much as misogyny. Imagine that. Yeah, Andrew. But that's a proper name. You might not know where it comes from. So, yeah, I don't know. Request was the equipment sales manager asking me to bring down an x-ray package to see that included in G-Plane. That does sound pretty fun. Did you get to x-ray something? Or did you just get a look at the images? Either way, that's pretty cool. I'd be afraid I'd break it. Hai gunaikes felusi tus paidas kai tas koras. The ladies love the children and the girls. Oh yeah, we've already learned kore. Just girl. The boys and girls is how we're going to translate that one. Hey iris. And we we could probably also say the women love their uh, children and well, their boys and girls, like you know, the ones that are theirs. Although we will later learn specific. Possessives. Hey, Iris, to Ophthalmu Micra Esti. The iris of the eye is small. Yep. To cranion to paidos micron. The head or skull of the boy is small. It's a little weird and morbid, but not inaccurate. Po stomachos ton anthropon. Age is tain gastera. The stomach of people leads to the gut. 
that's a little imprecise. But I'll take it. He palame tes gunaikos uch eche megalas arterias. The palm of the lady does not have giant arteries. True. True. <laughs> Again, these are strange sentences, but it's using the vocab, so we accept it. Ta crania kai ta skeleta esti pantazera. The skulls and the skeletons are all dry. I'm a little nervous of the uh, vibes I'm getting from this chapter. <laughs> and we have laid their body into the desert and they have become dry. <laughs> okay. And that is true if you've got the little model skull and the the model skeleton, those would be dry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling a little red rub. And also, hello, True. I hope you're having a good day. Hiris tes cores micra caicale esti. The nose of the girl is small and lovely. Well, that's very pleasant. That was a much happier note to end on. And more body parts. Oh, this is going to get weird. <laughs> Wish us luck, everybody. <laughs> so, organon, an instrument. An organ, but also just, yeah, anything. Chillin' in the office till the discipleship quad. Sounds fun. Enjoy your chill. Glosa or glota. Is the tongue. Uh, it can also be used like to mean language, um, as as it does in modernity. Um, the word that they give you there, the polyglot, uh, somebody who speaks a lot of languages. Um, the the double sigma versus the double tau, glosa glota, is a regional dialect. Uh, so some. Dialects in Greece have double S's and some will have double tau's. It's, it's nothing to be concerned about. Tumpanon, a drum. All right, yeah, timpani, that's a drum. Phone, a voice, a sound, right? Yeah, pho. All those kind of like pho and fa words, those, those all have to do with speech. Bronchos. Uh, the windpipe, that's why it's called bronchitis. Okay. Care, the hand. Uh, that's where we get chiropracti. Chiro chiropractor, that's the word I wanted. Pus, foot. We've already had octopus. Octopus. Uh, dia. Frogma. Diaphragma. Diaphragm. I mean, it's essentially the same word. It just sounds a little bit different. Cardia, heart. Sure. Cardiac arrest. Yep. Pericardion, the membrane around the heart. What you see is what you get with that word. Aorte. Aorta. Yep. Yep, indeed. Epidermis. Skin. Uh, akuo, I hear. Acoustic. Noon, now. Uh, not noon, but now. Uh, pais pasapan. All. Alright, yeah. yeah. Those are all classic words. 
I mean, parried cardion, you don't see a ton, but <laughs> they are all Greek words that are very close to English, so good choice. So let's get our uh, sentences here. Hai glossai, kai hai keres, kai hoi poles, esin organa anthropon. The tongues and the hands and the feet uh, are or organs of man. Yep. And in English, you probably wouldn't really pluralize so many. We would use a singular noun as a group noun. Uh, tongue. Well, you might say hands. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, parts of humans of humanity of the humans parts of human include tongue and tongue and hand they yeah, add I think we might just singularize the whole thing anyway lego te glose kai ho pais akue teen phonein uh, I, Lego my ego. The tongue and hands. Yeah, right? It's just, using plural for all of them just doesn't quite... work in English. Um, I, I'm going to see how they wanted me to translate Lego because uh, that is not a way I would have used it. I say I call. Okay. I say I call. It's fine. That's what we're doing. Maybe my Greek is really just that rusty. All right. Uh, so I say, I speak with my tongue, and the child hears my voice. I'm going to say my. Again, this is just the definite article, so you could translate it the. Uh, but. Going to translate it with my Lego. Yeah. I don't I don't know what my brain is. It's like trying to make it mean something else, but I can't think of what the Greek would be otherwise. So it's like, yeah, it just it means to speak. Leave it alone, Interceptor. Logos. Logos would be word, yeah. But this is the verb here. <sighs> yeah, so it's like, if the word is logos, then of course the verb is going to be to speak. Like, why is my brain not doing this well? <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. Uh, hey, cardia and toy pericardioi esti. The heart is in the membrane around the heart. True. Can't disagree. Not a Greek guy, can't read it, so just listening. A little bit of Greek is good to know. Oh. And the alphabet's not bad. Most of it's the same. It's just pronounced a little different. Alright, number four. Hi, arteriae, agusen, astain, adortain, he, arorte, astain, cardion. So the arteries lead to the aorta, and the aorta. Aorta leads to the heart. 
I don't remember my circulatory system, so I'm going to presume that's right. <laughs> I can't remember which way veins go and which way arteries go, you know. It's way beyond me. Uh, so there is no verb in the second part, so again, we just resupplied it. It is. Okay, good. <laughs> so veins lead blood away from things. Arteries away. Veins too. Dang it. I thought it was one way and then the other, the other. It's been how many years since I've taken a biology class? Uh, I mean, over 20. Oh, sad. Sad me. All right, number five. Pantes anthropoi ecusin epidermidas. All men have skin. Checks out. En toi broncoi tes cores acuo cacain phonain. In the windpipe, I hear an evil voice. And in the windpipe of the, the girl. Or a genitive. I'm gonna presume it's going with this part and not with this part. Uh, although, you know, technically, grammatically speaking, it could be the evil voice of the girl, but in the windpipe of the girl, I hear an evil voice. Sound, sound. There we go. That'll, that makes more sense. So, like, doing some sort of checkup. Here's some weird sound. Red blood arteries away because it's oxygenated. Veins are blue, so they are not going to the heart. Got it. Right. Because you go to the heart to get the oxygen, the oxygenated blood that gets pushed out to the rest of the body, which is the red arteries. Got it. Now I have to remember that arteries are red and veins are blue. I won't, but maybe I will. Ta diaphragma est... I can't even remember what the verb lego means, which is like the first verb you learn in Greek. Ta diaphragma est mega organon. The diaphragm is a large organ. Okay. A4 away. From the heart. Yeah. It's it's kind of like the context. <laughs> that is sometimes key. <laughs> Ta I might remember the slogan, but not how to apply it. Uh Ta Mega Therion Kai Ho Denos Sauros. Oh, we're talking about lizards now. Un Sera skeleta esti. So the great beastie and the terrible lizard are now dry skeletons. Right? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs and ancient, you know, giant lance loss. They are now skeletons. That's true. All right. Um, how are we doing? Exactly. Thanks, Father Mike Schwitz. Right, I'm going to do one more page, I think. Yeah, I don't feel like doing all the two, but I'll do one more. Fleps. A vein! Now we get vein! Fleb. Flebotomy. Alright, yeah. Cool. Um, that is not a verb you see in Greek very much. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that because the Greek vocabulary is so big. It really just depends on what you're reading. Uh, one of my professors in undergrad always said, like, no matter what you read in Latin, you're improving your Latin. But whatever you read in Greek, you're just going to improve that author. 
Like, <laughs> you don't necessarily improve your entire Greek. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, Oos, the air. Ear. All right, yeah. Otis, the gland beside the ear. Okay, that makes sense because we got the oat, the ear, and then the par beside. What? What is with all these gift subs? Thank you, Ghosty. I hope people enjoy their um their gift subs. Oh, why I got a second. Um. Dingling. Weird, but Wel welcome you all. Apparently just gonna keep making sounds in my ears. <laughs> Which is a very pleasant sound. But anyway. Yay! Enjoy your emotes. Maybe it's just gonna play one for each gift sub? Could be. Anyway. I hope you enjoy listening to it. Uh, longs, the larynx, yeah, that's that's what it is. Sternon, the breast, your sternum. Osteon, your bone. Osteoporosis. Uh, perios, perioosteos on, the membrane around the bone. Yeah, I'm learning a lot of medical stuff now that I never knew. Like, there's a membrane around your bone? I mean, it makes sense. There's a lot of things around your bone. Ugh. Skeletons. Alright. Uh, Phusis, your nature. That's an important Greek word. Gnome, your thought, your mind. Gnomic statements. Uh, that can be, that is a word that is very confusing when it's transliterated into English because it is spelt, you know, gnome. Like, like a gnome. Like a little garden gnome. Like I put in chat. Uh, so, one of those several key Greek words that just don't transliterate well. Uh, plera, the side. I think I mean your lung, too. Could be misremembering that. Uh, hepar, the liver. That's important because of prophesying. Lobos, lobe. Again, there's a lot of sacrificing terms here. Uh, spleen, the spleen. Ek or ex, meaning out of, genitive, and soon, with the dative, together with. Right? Synod, for example, which I did not realize was derived from Greek. But here we are. I learned that. Oh, and tis. Oh, we're learning tis. Well, that's exciting. Uh, so, tis means who, and t means what. Tines is the plural uh, in the masculine feminine. Tina is the plural in the neuter. And, if you've never read Greek before, enjoy the wonders of Greek punctuation. Because a question mark is a semicolon. Just accept it. Cool. You really get used to it, though. High plebis, estein cardian agusi, kai high arteriae, ek tes cardias. Hey, this is what we just learned, thanks to True Grit. The veins lead to the heart, and the arteries from the heart. Perfect. Love it. Uh, and again, resupply a goosey. Number two. Pantata ostea tu skeletu eche perioosteon. All the bones of the skeleton have a membrane around the bone. Checks out. Tis esti he usis tes gnomes ton anthropon. Question mark. Who? No. So this time we've got two subjects. We've got tis 
our inter interrogative, I always do that, our interrogative um, pronoun or adjective, tis. Uh, and then we also have heifusis, uh, which is also in the nominative. So uh, tis is actually modifying fusis. So what is the nature of the mind of man? Man. Of humans. Very cool. That's a good question. Um, something that, you know, might not really be important to you listening along at home. Um, but I haven't talked about accent marks. That I've just let them exist. Uh, and so you'll see them going up and down and up and down. And it's all very nice and lovely. Uh, and so the default is up, you know, in the dictionary, every accent is either just a acute going up or a circumflex because it's a big. <laughs> it's a big one. Yes, good. That makes sense. Just a different way of doing the vocalization. Uh, when nouns appear in the wild in actual sentences uh, some of those acutes oh, come on highlight what I want you to highlight some of those acutes no no well we'll at least circle it right here some of the acutes turn into grov no it goes down here uh, it goes down here it goes down here It's down here. And the reason it's going down in those places, I'll just stick with Tain Cardian here, um, is because there is a word with an accent that follows it. So, oh, a word with an accent follows it, and the accent mark is on the last syllable. So, Panta, it stays acute because it's on the second to last syllable. But, you know, if, you know, the accents were totally weird and different and the accent mark was panta, taostea, then the accent mark on the alpha here would go grav like it does in ta. Last syllable, word with an accent mark following it. Uh, so phone, it stays up because the verb esti doesn't have an accent mark. So it gets to stay up. Okay. Some exceptions. The interrogative. Tis. Um, is there any other tises in this? They only use it once and it's followed by an est, so it is not showing me a good point. Do I have it in the next one just to show? No, you're not. You're not gonna. Not gonna help me out with this one. Not gonna verify what I'm saying. Fine. Oh, here we go. There's one here. Tis, Pempe. Uh, so the interrogative. Um. Pronouns are gonna have that accent say acute, because it's a question. Um. When we ask a question, we use a certain inflection in our voice. That's being marked here by the accent mark. Who does this? That That's why it stays up. Okay. Back to the translations. And Greek is so precise. Um... Greek Greek is not an easy language. There are so many little details in Greek. It's fantastic, but extremely difficult. Alright. The larynx leads to the windpipe. Okay. 
En toi sternoi, kai ek tu broncu, he fone esti. In the chest, and <laughs> this is, I understand what this sentence is trying to say. It's just such a funny way of doing it. So, in the chest and from the windpipe is the voice. So, the voice is, we would probably say the voice comes from. But the voice is in the chest and from the windpipe. <laughs> sure. It's a great sentence. Uh, Pasai gunaikes ehusi glosas kai logos. Oh, here's our logos. All the ladies have tongues and words. Is he saying we're chatty? Ta ota eche lobus. Kai parotidas kai aque logus. The ears have lobes. Yes. As well as um, the mem the gland beside the ear. Okay. So ears have lobes and glands and hear words. Those are things that ears do. It's a little bit of what's called a zoigma, um, where you have a list and some of the items follow the same grammatical construction and then the last one doesn't. Uh, so they have this and this and verb, they do something completely different. To hepar sun toi spleni estin en tais theorais. Yeah, enjoy your emote. The liver, right? Yeah, hey, bar. The liver is with the spleen in your side, like in your rib cage area. I don't exactly remember where my liver and my spleen are, but, you know, in that region down there. Well, awesome. That was a lot of biology. <laughs> Woo. So next week we'll finish up biology. Oh, wow. Colons. That'll be a fun chapter. And some proper names. Oh, look, we'll get Steven. Get Steven next week. That'll be fun. Uh, proper name. Yeah, a lot of proper names do come from Greek. Oh, pronouns. Okay, so maybe next week I'll try and finish one, two, three, four. Yeah, that should be fine. Kind of finish this chat section before we get to the next big grammar point. That'll be fun. Uh, so, oh yeah, and I will be streaming next week. Um, My... Meeting is canceled because we have an event uh, next Thursday. So, be here all month for Greek. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I hope you learned about arteries and veins and dry skeletons. <laughs> everybody, have a good day, and I'll see you next week.